and we can't wait to hear from you guys if you have any questions you will be able to answer like or you'll be able to ask ask us any questions and be able to answer it ayan uh it's so cold this morning i'm wondering why you're not in a sweater first of all <laughs> yeah i was wondering that but for me you know i feel hot because i know this is a hot topic we are going to talk about a very hot topic so that's why i removed my jacket <laughs> and you're also from a hot area so yes <laughs> yeah ibaridi <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know i'm from a very hot environment like a very i'm from a an area which experiences most, mostly like hot climate changes and uh, so for me uh this cold is a blessing to me <laughs> because i'm not used to the, to it so for me it's something i'm comfortable you with you sound like <laughs> someone who, let, let us assume that uh, you're from you're from Ukambani mm -hmm. and then you meet water so it's like you're from a cold <laughs> a hot <home, a> <laughs> area that you come to meet cold yes you have to be very excited yeah i'm uh, very excited anyway. yeah and let's go through the innovations uh, i get to learn that there are so many innovations uh, in agriculture mm -hmm. that our viewers really need to know about yes yes so uh you know recently there have been a lot of innovation that have come like that have emerged and uh, we are going to talk to about them a few of them two or three or so yeah so one of the inno innovation is a uh, it's called precision agriculture this is like whereby the this is like a gps in your farm whereby different types of things are used such as satellites and drones like for example you can use a drone to monitor your farm how it is you know a lot of people have large farms it covers a very large area like many acres of farms like for example uh, those who are planting tea uh -huh. in yeah those farms are very big yes. you can't even get to know uh, where is the problem in the middle of your farm yes because yes. the first time i went to kiricho like i was like why is this farm not ending like you you travel and travel and travel but the farm are never ending you yes, see yes. so it's very hard for a farmer mm -hmm. to find ways of like identifying what types of crops need to be attended to what a uh, part of the of the garden mm -hmm. needs need uh, attention so through drones the use of precision agriculture mm -hmm. uh, you through the use of drone you can be able to identify areas that have been affected by pest or areas that need water or fertilizers uh, and also you can take the pictures of your farm so that you can also identify areas that you need to improve on let me ask you something mm -hmm. uh, even if it sounds uh, so weird mm -hmm. do drones zoom yeah they so do that's like how they zoom the the pests yes from the farm yeah, yeah you can lower your drone mm -hmm. and then it can be above your crops mm -hmm. like itembetu kidogo and then you can be able to notice you can identify there are others drones w which have sensors you mm -hmm. can identify what is moving and what's not moving mm -hmm. yeah there's another innovation that i heard you talk about mm -hmm. of uh, robots yes. you can use robots to harvest to harvest uh, your your crops yeah uh, the other day we were just talking about harvesting mm -hmm. harvesting strawberries yeah and you were just saying that uh, harvesting strawberries is so hard because they are fragile mm -hmm. so they are fragile yes. so you have to handle them with care i don't know if yeah. the drones can also handle them with care but there's an innovation that uh, there are drones uh -huh. that can be used to harvest your crops especially the, the robots the project, yeah, the, the robots also. yeah for example there is a company called Robotica Badans mm -hmm. it invented a robot that harvests the apples mm -hmm. like the robot harvests the apples and then they keep them you know that is also some new in innovation do we check these robots how do they work am a wakisha ingia kwa shamba they have a sample of it the better they go goes low then mm -hmm. they just stand there <laughs> i think they are being controlled they are being controlled those kind of robots are being controlled maybe they have i i don't know those people with artificial intelligence like uh, they know a lot about such kind of things as robots mm -hmm. yeah so i think they are the ones who control those things so harvest the apples but on the judging part i'm so concerned maybe mm -hmm. was if you if you have any any idea of <laughs> whether you can charge a robot or not you can tell us in the comment section yeah but also robots i think robots okay it can be very useful uh, very easy but 
<laughs> For me, I've never seen such a thing. I just hear them. I watch them You've online. You've never seen them on, oh, online. Yes, but mm-hmm. I, I used to attend, like, I attended back in high school, I attended a welfare. Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw, like, the students making robots for, I don't know, small, small robots. I didn't oh, even understand small, what it is. Ah, I was wondering, which yeah. school was that? Yeah, like it was a project. Mm-hmm. We went to a project uh, fair in Naro County, mm-hmm. and uh, there are people who did robotics and they invented some things like some small stuff. I just saw some small lorries picking stuff and reloading. Mm-hmm. Like, I was so excited and I was so surprised. Mm-hmm. I never knew that such things exist. Like, I just thought robots are in the movies and the rest, but. Personally, I never knew that they exist in Kenya. Mm-hmm. I thought they just e- exist uh, abroad. Yeah, yeah, me too. I thought I, I thought that. I even thought that they don't exist. That is what <laughs> I thought until yes, today I researched about the robots and I saw that people are using them in agriculture. Mm-hmm. Like they are using them that robotic abundance. They are using them to have this, those couples. It's a good innovation. The only problem is that I really doubt if the robots can, can climb trees <laughs> to harvest mangoes. <laughs> me too, me too, me too. But maybe, maybe it happens. Yeah. It does happen. Because according to research that I've done, they really exist and they are doing that. Mm. Yeah. There's another US-based company called US Company. I think it's US Company Appeal. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've invented a very funny a very funny stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like uh, pills. Mm-hmm. They're inventing pills. Mm-hmm. Pills. Pills. Mm-hmm. What kind of pills? It covers the fruits mm-hmm. that they can use to cover fruits. Because uh, when you when you look keenly, mm-hmm. you realize that uh, fruits or even different types of crops, especially fruits, mm-hmm. they really spoil. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. For example, those ones that are being sold in the supermarket. Mm-hmm. Mangoes can stay in the supermarket. Nobody is buying them because mm-hmm. I want to believe that most people prefer mangoes from the market. Mm-hmm. Mangoes can stay in the market, in, in the supermarket until they spoil. Mm-hmm. Now, this company mm-hmm. has invested pills that you can use to cover the, the mangoes wow. so that they don't go bad. I don't understand how it works, but uh, all I know is that it is odorless. Mm-hmm. The pills are odorless, they are mm-hmm. tasteless. So I think when you want to take the fruit, you have to. <laughs> remove the first piece. Wow. But that is an amazing work. Yeah. That is a good job. It's a good job, but mm-hmm. on the other hand, mm-hmm. there are people who can really take advantage of that situation. They mm-hmm. just go, uh, like the other day we were seeing uh, someone applying, I don't know if it was oh, the end of the Yeah, on the avocado. Yes. They, they pretended that the avocado is Right. Really ripe. Yes. Yeah. When you meet such people mm-hmm. and they realize that they, this invention, mm-hmm. and to believe that they really take advantage and they also make their own pills and make money out of that. Yeah. It's so bad. Yeah, that is so bad. Because I, I watched that video about that woman who was, I don't know, it's a man or a woman who was painting their avocados and then selling them to people, like pretending that and they were. And people are right. really buying. I'm wondering, yeah. I'm, I'm still wondering, how do you buy an avocado without pressing it? Yeah, you can press it and know what type of avocado. <laughs> is that if it's ripe or if it's not ripe no, how will you buy something that is spoiled you're yeah, not checking it the color. yeah <laughs> that's funny though that, that was a that was a bad innovation mm-hmm. <laughs> the avocado one was a bad innovation yeah but this this u.s based company uh i feel it's a good uh, invention because it can really help farmers mm-hmm. uh who are harvesting to store though uh our ceo is always telling us that if you're a farmer should harvest to take to the market, harvest mm-hmm. to sell, not to store. Yeah, but harvest then, to sell. Why would you store them? Why would you harvest something and then store them? Now, this innovation is a, is like an advantage to farmers who want to store. Mm-hmm. I want to believe that that one really, really, really helps them. But why would you store something if your aim was to get money out of it? The problem is the market now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're looking them for are, the market. They are, by the way, the market. Those, you know, those who farm with passion. <laughs> but yes, before you farm, you do anything. You do livestock keeping or the farming. You first research about the market. You research the market. Mm-hmm. You do what before you bring your products into the market. You know what if, what type of products are in the season. Yeah. What kind of market trends. Yeah. 
that is very, very the best way by the way. Mm-hmm. If, if you want to venture into agribusiness, mm-hmm. you have to be very serious. You don't yes. just grow things with passion. <laughs> you will end up losing your life. Another guest of ours here just talked about growing mm-hmm. growing things with growing crops with passion. With passion, yeah. And you ended up uh, getting so so many losses. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't know if you have any other innovation that you've heard of. Uh okay, there is also gene editing. Uh, there is also that innovation I, I, uh, innovation I had of it's called gene editing. Mm-hmm. This is whereby like it's like it's like a GMO. Mm-hmm. Like you you identify certain of kind of crop. Maybe you have maize, mm-hmm. and you want to like not even maize. Let's say you have a chicken, mm-hmm. and then you have two chickens. You have a, like you want your chicken to produce certain types of of chicks or what. Or gods, you want your god to produce certain certain types of animals mm-hmm. or yeah, the healthy animals. Mm-hmm. So you consider like finding a healthier god and then bring it, breeding it with that god to produce that healthy animal. I think we'll venture so much into that uh, yeah. as we continue. Yeah. There's so many innovations in agriculture uh, that we'll get to learn more about them as we continue. Yes. Uh, but. Uh, as, first of all, let's let's dive into our topic. Today we have a very interesting topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that you'll all enjoy our topic of today. It's yes. all about livestock. Yeah. If, you are, uh, if you are rearing different types of livestock, we are here for you. That's why we are here. Our yes. discussion is going to be very interesting. Keep following. We are live on YouTube at A Farmers Media, on Facebook at A Farmers Media, on Twitter at A Farmers with a Z underscore media, and mm-hmm. our website www.afarmers.com. That's why we are here with mm-hmm. you at a farmer's media where we connect, we learn and, and grow. grow. And now to our topic of the day, yeah? animal welfare and livestock management. There are so mm-hmm. many things you don't know. About. You don't understand about animal welfare and livestock yes. management. There's so, so many things uh-huh. that will educate you on. Yeah. We know that it involves taking care of the health and also the ethical treatment of farm animals. How do you treat your farm animals, like your animals in your farm? How do you take care of them? Do you attend to them? What types of practices do you practice while doing, like while attending to your animals or your crops or any of your livestock? For example, if you have a butchery, I've seen it so, so many times. Those are butcheries you don't treat. Mm. You don't treat those animals right. Uh Teach you. Yeah, we how teach you, you doing it. You, how don't, you, you don't just take a cow, alafu, eh, unaenda unaifungia, you cut the neck, that, that cow is going through a lot. Mm-hmm. Imagine imagine you being being done for such a thing. Wana kuchukua tu, kidogo kidogo, they cut your neck because now people are going to feed on you. Mm-hmm. It's so painful. Yes. But uh, we'll tell you, we'll tell you yeah. how to handle such situations. Yeah, we're also going to t- talk about feeding, like uh, veterinary care, and then consider transporting and also slaughter. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have so, so many subtopics. I hope you yes. are ready. And we know that the topic today is very hot, and you guys, you are going to enjoy the topics of today because we are going to make it very enjoyable and you'll be able to learn a lot from us you'll be able to connect with us and learn with us and continue growing with us all first of all let's talk about the health care mm-hmm. of the animals mm-hmm. uh when you uh mo- most of you when you have your animals back at home for example even a cow as the cow gets injured mm-hmm. <laughs> Most of you just take salt. <laughs> that is the traditional way that I see people doing in the village. You just take salt mm-hmm. and you pour on the injured part. Mm-hmm. And also there is also hand picking whereby animals are like, uh, you find that, because I've also looked after animals, yeah. by the way, I'm a pastoralist. <laughs> so there is a time, like, I used to look after animals and uh, our gods, like, you know, sometimes we take the animals to the places whereby they feed and then there are those dawns that get into the animals' Sleep feet, them. yeah. Mm-hmm. So we used to do this, like my mom taught me this and also my dad used to Actually, on the animals' part, you have mm-hmm. to explain for us well because you come from those sides. Yeah, 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 I come from that side. I'm a, a very proud pastoralist, by the way. Mm-hmm. And to all pastoralists out there, hello, <laughs> welcome to our channel. Mm-hmm. And today, uh, today we are going to talk. Like I'm, t- I was telling you about the story of me looking after our gods. Yes. So three of our gods got the those thorns don- between their legs. You know, the, the legs have those hard parts, yes. and then they don't get inside. So for me, I was told no, by no, my. Don't get inside. 
say the hard part. Yes, like in yeah. the middle. Ah, you know, the, oh. the hard part and then the middle. So yeah, it's those, very those hard to remove. Them, yeah, the and it's also part. it's always very painful for uh, for the animal. Mm. So you just like take the animal and then like, make it lay down and then you remove the thorn. Like hand pick, just remove it and then leave the animal. And then if you see that the animal is still limping, we used to like my mother used to boil some water, some hot water, and then we will like we are just taking our livestock you are taking care of the livestock as your child, you see. Mm-hmm. So for us, the the animals are very precious to us. But I want to believe that you have so so many animals. How yeah. do you identify that this one is hurt? You know, yeah, you more. will know because like I've experienced a lot of people having herd of kettles, like herd of kettles, herd of goats. Mm-hmm. But you know, they know like each animal has a name, like they name it and every animal, like according to pastoralists, mm-hmm. like um. I'm an an ex, an expert in that category yeah. because <laughs> that's where you, you know are, they yeah. name yeah they name each animal they give each animal a name mm-hmm. and then you identify your animal like when they are walking you will realize that this animal is not walking well this animal is limping so you just say that ah let me do this mm-hmm. let me identify all the animals that are missing or that that they are feeling sick you will see the by the by the way the animal is walking. You will identify that this animal is not well, and then you will go and find out what is wrong with it. Is it injured? Like, is it the thorn? Is it the other thing? You know, sometimes animals also they develop wounds sometimes, mm-hmm. so you will be able to identify it. Is it ticks? So, How do you identify the ticks. The ticks. Uh-huh. Like sometimes we hand pick them, or we there is a dip. We put the oh, dip in the water, and then the you yes. spray them using the nozzle. It's called the the, the the thing that they usually put on the oh, back, back. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, that, that's that's like a bug yeah mm-hmm. that one yeah you spray them with that uh, after they like you, you don't spray them when they are outside like you make sure that they are inside the cow shed or the the, the cow shed or the the deep mm-hmm. and then you spray them because also the ticks are the source like the ticks also live in the in that environment where they stay so you make sure that you you Pour the nini, the deep inside the the animal's shell. So those who don't understand what a deep is, yeah. uh, I think I'll explain it according to what I see in mm. my place. There's a building. There's a building that I only see cows being being taken there. I'm not mm. sure of other animals. Yeah. Uh, it's like when you are getting into that building, it's just a somehow a stretch a straight structure. Yeah. When you're getting into that building, uh, you're going downstairs. Mm-hmm. Like the animals go downstairs. Mm-hmm. Then I think uh, they are sprayed once yeah. they get in there. Yes. It's easy to spray them. They can't run away because now they are deep. That's why it's called a deep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they can't run away because they're already deep inside there. After yeah. they are sprayed, then they are taken out through the other side. Yeah, they're but 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 deep. for us, like in an area where I come from, by the way, I come from Samburu County. In that area, the, the animals are like placed in a shed. I don't know if it's a shed or what, but it's called a boma. Mm-hmm. Whereby they take the the trees and then they fence the animals inside. Mm-hmm. It's we call it a boma, mm-hmm. and then they are placed inside. That is where they live. All of actually, them. yeah, all of them. Like mm-hmm. there is no rooftop. There is nothing. Mm-hmm. They are just like that. And then that is where the, there is a medicine also called dew. Mm-hmm. So that medicine they put it into the water. They dilute it. Mm-hmm. And then they spray it on the animals, so it gets rid of the the, the ticks. And they still sleep in the same place. Yes. Now we should be trained about housing and management <laughs> of the animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I don't I don't think it's nice if we just spray them in the same place and then allow them to sleep in the same place. I think those things will just come back. Ah, uh, you, you know uh, the reason why they spray it on their home, like mm-hmm. on their where they live, mm-hmm. on their habitats, mm-hmm. it's because the ticks also are also like they also inhabit inside that mm. they also inhabit there you see mm. the ticks also like you can see the ticks crawling going onto the fence of the the animals mm. they go to that fence and then you see they come back at night and then they invest the animals so to prevent that mm-hmm. to get rid of all the bugs the all all the ticks mm-hmm. they spray everywhere around the animals I have yeah. to believe that even after the after the animals are sprayed, mm-hmm. definitely there are some uh, to injuries. Do you say to injuries or uh, the red bats after mm-hmm. the ticks have fallen? Mm-hmm. Because the ticks were taking blood from the animals. Mm-hmm. So that part has to be painful. 
Yes, right? yes. It has to be painful. So it's usually very painful for an animal. Whereas, you know, you see the animal and then you feel that pity. It's like you're a baby. So, <laughs> 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 so we feel the like we feel the pain of our animals. Uh-huh. Like you, you, you will never feel that pain until you become a pastoralist. Uh-huh. Hey, my dad, if you eat like any goat with a like maybe hash, like so hard, uh-huh. my father will beat you up. Unakosea mtoto wake. And that is the, the livelihood. So why would you beat something that is helping you? <laughs> Uh, at some point, you are talking about breeding. Mm-hmm. And this breeding part, it's very interesting. Those who love chicken in, going to chicken in. Yes, yes. The, those, chicken in those, those chicken. the chicken in gang. <laughs> oh, I hope this. you are there. I hope you are there. You're, you're following. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell us in the comment section, do you enjoy those chicken? Yes. Do you know what the chicken passes through before they get there? Yeah. So those machines that you just get there and you see them rolling. <laughs> You see them rolling and see, ah, this chicken is very yummy. You look at I it, know. the way it's fat. <laughs> you don't know what the chicken has gone through. Yeah. Well, let's talk about breeding. Yes. And you talk about breeding, mm-hmm. you, just like Ayan was telling us before, mm-hmm. you realize that uh, uh, breeding is the process whereby, is it a process? Uh, yeah, take, it's, a, it's a process. Yeah, yeah, it's a process. You can take a kienyeji. I, I, I hope you understand the kienyeji term. Yes. I know it's everybody knows kienyeji. Yeah, yeah, but not the kienyeji that you feel like they say, ooh, like, this girl is kienyeji. No, like, not that chicken. one. <laughs> You're talking about kienyeji chicken. Kienyeji chicken. And then you take the broilers. The broilers are the fat ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Then you breed. Like, mm-hmm. Because you want, you, you don't want a kienyeji breed. You want a, a broiler so yes. that they grow faster. Yeah. So that you sell them. It, it's just an advantage to, it, it's just an advantage when you're selling them, but it's mm-hmm. a disadvantage to the chicken. Yeah. Because and you know that those, like, the chickens, the it's called, the, the br- it's broilers. Broilers. The ones who are like, yeah, broilers, the ones who lay eggs. Are the... No, the ones who lay eggs are layers. Oh, yes. yeah. Broilers, broilers. just fat to be eaten. Especially, yes. <laughs> you'll find them in the hotels. I don't think there are people who just have broilers just for fun or even just to keep them. Like, they, 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 they say, yo, kuku ya great. That, yeah, that great, one, yeah. Exactly. And you know, they usually rush their growth. Yeah. Like, they make it, they, they ensure that there is rapid growth in those chickens. In around five to seven weeks. Yeah, in around five to seven weeks. That is very fast because uh, they ensure that the chickens grow very fat. Yeah. And those, like, it, it leads to various disadvantages. Yeah. yeah. Like, for example, lameness. Mm-hmm. A chicken, uh, ukipata kukuyako, your broiler is not working. You yeah. have stressed that broiler. Yeah, because, because you're, yeah. you are overfeeding it. Uh-huh. You want it to grow big. Five uh-huh. to seven weeks, uh, uh, yeah. a broiler is already big. Yeah, you are rushing it you too rushing fast. It, yes. Where is it going? It can't run. It can't mm-hmm. walk. It's just there. And you realize that when when uh, when the broiler becomes sick, when you compare it to the kienyeji, mm-hmm. the, local, the local chicken, mm-hmm. the, there is high chances of the local chicken getting healed so fast. Yeah, and you also find that that lameness is caused by that rapid growth yeah. and also the heaviness that meat. Yeah. You see, like most of the farmers, like they concentrate on the physical yes. than the behavioral. Yeah. So through the physical, they, they just want the chicken to get fat. They just want profit. They they want the chicken to get fat and they sell it, have big meat. So, but you know they don't they don't see the behavioral. How does that chicken walk? How does it behave? When you ask such a farmer, the farmer will just tell you, "I'm a choker too. That chicken is yeah, not tired. Yeah, yeah, it's th- it's not tired. <laughs> you're stressing that chicken. Yeah, you're stressing you're stressing it yeah. out, which is not good. When yeah, it it's not really good. Breeding, mm-hmm. uh, just don't overfeed. Don't mm-hmm. overfeed that chicken and you're forcing it to grow. Yeah. It becomes I know I know you love chicken breasts. I know <laughs> you love the chicken breasts when they are big. When you go to the and the and the drumsticks. Yes. And the drumsticks. You, you just want that one. That's For me, I like drumsticks. <laughs> when I get that one, ah, so I'm you're also full. promoting breeding. <laughs> no, not really. But when I get the KFC chicken, I will, I I usually eat it. Let me tell you. You know when a person went, went, like goes to KFC, they don't usually concentrate on the they don't concentrate on the what is happening, what is really happening yes. to this chicken. <laughs> how did, how was this chicken like? How was this chicken cooked? Mm-hmm. Like when you go there, you don't concentrate on the rest. You just like when you see the chicken, you hey, want the fat one. Your eyes turn red. <laughs> you just want the chicken. 
the... So you will eat it without even complaining, without even <laughs> thinking of other circumstances. After finishing it, that is when you will go there and think about <laughs> any other thing. There was a time we went out with, with some of my friends mm-hmm. and they at the boxes for the chicken in and they were being brought in. Mm-hmm. And everybody was just looking for the fat parts. Mm-hmm. You see? You of course. Say, you of know, course. Everybody will do that. I will actually, definitely do that. Actually, when you go to a restaurant, mm-hmm. you realize that, not even a restaurant, even when you compare those who are going to KFC, chicken mm-hmm. in, and those who are going to this Kenyeji, mm-hmm. Kenyeji restaurant, mm-hmm. where there is natural food, there is Kenyeji chicken, you realize that higher percentage Mm-hmm. They just love chicken in and gifts. Of course, yes. You know, Kenyeji, it's grown naturally. Mm-hmm. They are growing naturally. So you, you'll find that maybe it's not that fat. Um, maybe, if it's fat, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's maybe a chicken that has lived for so long. Yeah. In my home, we even have a cock that we just look we look at it and we're like, ah, ikuku inikame memaliza mwaka uko. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> Imagine a, a chicken that has taken a year uh-huh. and the one that has taken five to seven weeks. Mm-hmm. People will go for the five to seven weeks because it's fat. This other one, it will take almost a year for it. Of course, we will not choose that. <laughs> like, I can give you a scenario. By the way, I like, I was with my friend one day and we were just like scrolling through the social media and then we came across a certain woman who was selling chicks, mm-hmm. who was like doing the chicken business, selling the, the grade, the, the small grade, like the chicks. Mm-hmm. So he, so we decided that we should visit that woman, mm-hmm. and then we went to that. I don't, I think it was, it was located where, past, uh, the woman was living past. I don't Gedurai, past Gedurai, mm-hmm. and then we went to her home, and we saw that, uh, she's like she has more than three hundred chicks, mm-hmm. and then there were the like three hundred chicks, the smaller ones, mm-hmm. the ones who had hatched like uh, a day before us. So we found that the chicks, like we, ha- the chicks were very many, and then they were, they were, they put them in one place, and then we asked the woman, the process, like, how does she manage to feed all the chickens? She just say, told us that she always buy the chicks at twenty five shillings. Mm-hmm. She has her customer. Shillings each. Yes, mm-hmm. the this chicks twenty five shillings. Yeah, they want. Mm-hmm. The moment they hatch, mm-hmm. like after two to three days, mm-hmm. the woman goes and picks them from the the customer, he, like her customer, mm-hmm. and then brings the chicks and then takes care of them. Mm-hmm. He told us that the, chick, the chicks grow very fast. Mm-hmm. Like in five to seven weeks, they are very mature. They are ready to be sold. They are ready to be slaughtered. Mm-hmm. So like I was so surprised because how? How these small chicks, are they going to grow that fast in five weeks? <laughs> like I was like, this is impossible. Mm-hmm. How is this happening? And then I was asking them, how do you manage to get all these chicks? Mm-hmm. And then the woman was like, the person who buys eggs, mm-hmm. and then, I don't know, the they great eggs, yeah. There's a hatching machine. Yeah, the hatching machine. The hatching hatching machine. And then I was so shocked. Like, I always knew that the, the chicks come out of the eggs, like, with the chicken. The chicken is the one. <laughs> that who... is the natural way. <laughs> yeah, I that knew that. And then I was so surprised. You know, I come from a rural area, and I have never been exposed to such kind of things. I only know the VNG, I only know the Kienyeji way. Uh, so when I read there, I was like, wow, this is happening. You can tell us in the compensation. Yeah. Uh, let's compare the two. Between mm-hmm. uh, chicks that are hatched the natural way and the ones that are hatched using a machine, which mm-hmm. are better. Comment, tell us on the comment section. We're yeah. still live on YouTube, at a farmer's media. We're still live on Facebook, at a farmer's media, on Twitter, at a farmer's with a Z underscore media, and on our website, www.afarmersmedia.com. Mm-hmm. Tell us on the comment section as you continue. Which ones do you prefer? The ones that yeah. are hatched natu- naturally or the ones that are hatched with the hatching machine? Uh-huh. Because the, the, natural, the natural ones, mm-hmm. in case you don't know, how chicks are hatched naturally. Uh-huh. By the way, they are the cool kids who don't know who that. Who don't know thing. that. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you how we do it. Yes. In our tell place. them. Uh, if you know sawdust, mm-hmm. you take the sawdust, you mm-hmm. place them inside a basin, mm-hmm. or even a, yes, inside a basin, or even a box. Yes. Then you place the eggs that you want mm-hmm. to be hatched. Then there's a, definitely there's a, a, a mother. A mother hen. <laughs> yes, the mother. The, the, mother the big G. The, yes, the, the OG. G. Yes. <laughs> that will be, that will be sleeping or, or even lying on the eggs mm-hmm. to cover them, uh, to give them warmth. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I, I don't know how many days it takes. Uh, definitely, I'll, with time, I'll give you, I'll tell you how many days it takes. Mm-hmm. The, the mother hen warms the egg, just yeah. the, on the eggs. Yes. And then uh, after some time, they'll be hatching slowly by slowly. Yes. But uh, the, using the, the machines, mm-hmm. using the machines, uh, I, don't th- I don't think it takes so long. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the mother hen will always sleep. Of course. And come back. But the machine, I think it's always on. Yeah. So the warmth is always there. Yes. And also, like, on, on the, the cheeks I was talking about, mm-hmm. those, uh, you cheeks are great. Mm-hmm. They call it like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, the, those cheeks, like, they, they had, like, a very good environment. Like, I was like, but it's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Like, that woman was telling us that she wakes up at, at around 4, mm-hmm. 4 p.m., mm-hmm. She wakes up to look after the chicks, to ensure that there is lighting, mm-hmm. to ensure that the chicks have enough food, like, to ensure that all the chicks are okay. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like, you wake up at every day at 4 p.m. Like, she wakes up 4 a.m. 4, 4 a.m., yeah, 4 a.m., not 4 p.m., sorry. So, like, I was like, wow. Then this is a lot of work for me. I can't definitely, I can't definitely do, do that. Like, I can't do that. Definitely, when you want money, you just wake up at 4 a.m. and mm-hmm. do all yeah. that. Uh, we're still here. We are still with you to educate you. I hope you are getting to learn uh, mm-hmm. from whatever we are talking about. Our main topic of the day is still animal welfare and livestock management. We're going to take a short commercial break and we'll be back as we continue with the discussion. Yeah. This is the farmers media where we connect, learn, and grow. And don't forget to turn into our social media accounts at the farmers media in Facebook, a farmers media in YouTube at www.farmers.com in our website continue tuning in we'll be back yeah we'll be back have you felt that the climate has been changing Perhaps the dry season seems hotter, the rains are too late, or too early, too little, or don't come at all. You see more pests and diseases on your shamba. All of this can lead to less yields. By managing your water and soil, you can ensure that your shamba is still productive. This could be as simple as harvesting water from your roofs, investing in solar irrigation, and practicing conservation agriculture such as mulching, crop rotation, and minimum tillage. Trees are also a part of smart farming and can help you make your farm cooler, keep your soils intact and healthy. Planting fodder crops and turning grasses into hay or silage is another smart way of adapting. But be aware that even with smart farming, some things will remain out of your control. That's why it's a good idea to think about insurance, as this can cover you from these unforeseen events. Good soil and water management, along with planting trees and pest and disease control, can also help you increase your yields and income as the climate changes. To have healthy cows that produce well, you need to feed them with enough energy from fodder crops, proteins from supplements like dairy meal and legging plants, such as Caliandra, along with minerals, vitamins, and water. For a healthy cow weighing 380 kilograms, it will need to eat one bale of hay a day, which is the same as 20 kilograms of fresh fodder. If you are growing your own fodder, you'll need about one acre per year to feed one cow, one heifer, and a calf. Good fodder grasses include disease-resistant napier grass, bracaria, and panicum grasses. If you don't have enough land to feed your cows, then you'll need to buy extra fodder from other places. Remember to always have clean water available to your cows. If you want your cows to produce plenty of good milk, make sure they are always well fed. Cows need proper housing for good health, 
protection and to ensure they can produce well. A good housing for your cow is clean, dry, comfortable and safe. You need these five areas for your shade. Sleeping area, walking area, feeding area, milking place and calf pen. You can use local materials to build your unit. Each sleeping area needs to be 7 feet long by 4 feet wide per cow. The sides should be made of wood or stone to stop wind coming through and the roof should not let rain in. The walking area needs a slope towards the back of the pen so that manure and waste can wash away. The milking place should be 7 feet long and 4 feet wide. The calf pen should be about 5 feet long and 4 feet wide per calf. Use concrete flooring in all areas so it's easy to clean. Clean your cow shed daily and use a disinfectant like Coopersine. Thank you so much for joining us. We are back. This is a farmer's media where we connect and learn and grow. My name is Mary Oswero and I have my co-host. Regina Ayanai. Yes, we are still here continuing with our topic. Mm -hmm. And right now we are championing for climate smart mm -hmm. agriculture. Yeah. Right now we are championing for climate smart agriculture. Mm -hmm. The videos that you, we were playing during the break, uh, my co-host will tell you more about them. And also, as a farmer who likes content, either being posting or viewing agricultural content, you can visit Sprout website at www.sproutopencontent.com to learn more. I'll repeat again, you can visit www.sproutopencontent.com to learn more. Yes, continue tuning in. We are live on Facebook at a Farmers Media. We are still live on YouTube at a Farmers Media. On our website, www.afarmersmedia.com and on Twitter as a farmers underscore, a farmers with a Z underscore media. Continue sending your comments, your questions. Uh, initially, I had asked you a question. Uh, between, the, between the chicken that are grown naturally and the broilers, which ones are the best? You can tell us on the comment section so that we get to know the percentage that loves a eh, chicken in and KFC and uh, the percentage that loves it the natural way. Our topic is still uh, animal welfare and livestock management. Ayan. And also to to expound more on the website that I told you earlier, that is www.sproutopencontent.com. It's whereby, uh, this is a platform whereby the global agricultural experts and farmers meet to share and discover skills and new opportunities. So make sure to visit that site to learn more about Sprout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, I'm sure you visit that website. It yeah, because it's amazing. It's, it's an amazing. amazing, it's educative. Yeah. You'll get to know so much. And also you get website. to learn a lot about Sprout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, before we left, we had a very interesting discussion. Uh -huh. Hey. We've really majored on KFC and chicken in. Yes. Wale wa KFC na chicken in. Sia titu na wapiga. Yeah, mm -hmm. tunajua mko hapo, mnatuangalia tu. Mko tu sawa. The yeah. chicken are sweet even as we eat them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we also eat them. Yes, yeah, so yeah. don't think that uh, we are against you. Uh -huh. We're just we are just informing you so that you know what the chicken goes through. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and also, uh, we, I know we are still on our topic of animal welfare and livestock management, mm -hmm. and uh, we were we were talking about several other topics, and uh, we are going to continue yes. telling you more and educating you more about the topics we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So another topic is feeding, and uh, another subtopic is feeding and uh, watering the animals. Mm -hmm. Like you make sure the animals are in a healthy environment, you make sure that they are well fed, you make sure that they have an access to water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You realize that uh, in places where there's no water, animals just tend to, some even tend to eat soil. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they don't take water. Yes. That is what makes the animals to die so fast, which mm -hmm. is not good. We should mm -hmm. be taking good care of our animals. The moment you are, you are starting to do livestock farming, yeah. please ensure 
that you are ready with everything. You yes. are ready to take care of this animal. This animal, imagine if you were the animal and then you're just being left there to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, will you do the same thing that, like, will you like the animal to do the same thing to you yes. that you do to the animal? You live in, 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 I believe that those animals that are left just to eat sand, do not drink water, mm-hmm. they don't like the owners. Yeah, of course, they don't like <laughs> they just them. Can't talk. You see that there is always another an animal that will look you and run away because it knows that this person, this person is going to mistreat me today. So just think. Today question would be like, think if you are an animal, yes. like would you like to be treated as an like the way you treat your animal by actually, your animal? Actually, when I was young, I never used to think that animals have feelings. Actually, I used to beat. <laughs> <laughs> I used to beat our cows like if uh. I'm just if I just get the chance mm-hmm. huh, to just bring them home from uh-huh. where they were grazing from. Mm. Uh, by the time to Nafika Nyumbani Amekula Viboko, it's I, I I don't know, I just used to find it so yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. But nowadays I realize that animals have feelings. Yeah, they and do have feelings. They do have feelings. Uh and on and uh, on the matter of animals having feelings, mm-hmm. when you when you have a butchery or uh, you just have to eat an animal. Consider mm-hmm. there there are so many there are ways that you can you can okay, not not necessarily hurting mm-hmm. but there are ways that you can slaughter that animal and it will go Yeah, without painlessly. It, yes, without it feeling that you are hurting it. Mm-hmm. I really feel bad for cows. Me too. <laughs> like as a meat lover, I love meat but <laughs> me I used to cry like staring when I see an animal being slaughtered, I used to cry a lot. Even right now I can't stand like seeing an animal being slaughtered. You I don't can know slaughter chicken? I can't. Oh like, my god. It's scary. For me I don't I don't I don't like it. <laughs> It's struggling and you are just still looking at it like with not knowing what is... Ah, I used to feel a lot of pain because for me, like, as a pastoralist, we feel that pain for our animals. Yeah. So for me, like, I don't, like, I, I don't, like, I'm not used to witnessing animals being slaughtered because mm. for us, mm-hmm. like, you just, the animals, like, there is a, it's an arrow. You shoot the animal. Oh, Yeah, uh-huh. on a certain part. It can be on the the neck or on the here somewhere somewhere on there get to the neck necessarily how i don't know you they mean? are experts they are experts to aim yeah like when you shoot it like that it dies immediately i don't know how they do but that is what they do because for me that is what i've witnessed and i was like wow this is so happening but the people were slaughtering animal like they do it like they do it but sometimes you do it in a good way like my mom used to tell me that when slaughtering a, a chicken you don't have like to make it last for long, like you use the the blunt knife <laughs> while slaughtering. <laughs> that is like tormenting. Mm-hmm. And also, like my mom told me that the when you slaughter the animal using a blunt knife, mm-hmm. like the, the, the when you slaughter the chicken mm-hmm. using a blunt knife, you know the meat hardens. Mm-hmm. So even if you cook it, like it's hard because the struggle it makes the the meat harden. So that is according to my mom. <laughs> that is a meat. But when you when you just slaughter it's like once like this. And then it's it will but be soft. But when you're chicken and then you just cut it once. Now oh, the blood will be all over. Yeah like you for, should like, hold it eh? slaughter it gently. Yeah like there's a, there's a time I was with my sister at home and my mom told us that there's a, a guest coming and she wants us to slaughter a chicken. I was, you know, me, I can't do that because I was so afraid. Even watching it itself makes me, like, feel so pitiful. I don't know what. So I just left my sister alone, and my sister was struggling with it, and then she, like, she she messed up, like, a big deal because she slaughtered it a little bit and then let it rain. So it ran all over the compound, like, blood. pouring blood everywhere. Like, <laughs> it was so crazy. Like I was like, "What is this?" You're shining blood with the ancestors. <laughs> yeah, like, and everybody was running, like, running around the plot trying to catch it because it was spreading the blood all over. It can go to the road, so they finally caught it and then they slaughtered it. It was running oh. all over. <laughs> that was a funny one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like for me, I wasn't even helping. I was just jumping there and then screaming, but "Cut the chicken!" Yeah, you were ready to eat. Very it. comfortable eating it without <laughs> even blinking. 
<laughs> and you talk about uh, these animals that uh, initially we had, we had talked about breeding. Yeah. Uh, those animals that uh, pass through breeding, mm-hmm. they also have metabolic disorders. Yes. Like uh, you just find that the muscles are so weak. Mm-hmm. The animals are just tired, like we just said before. Mm-hmm. The bones are not strong. Uh, ukienda KFC or chicken in, mm-hmm. you realize that you eat the chicken and you'll even eat the bones. Yeah. Try it with the natural ones. Yeah. You'll, Try- break, you'll break your teeth. You'll break your teeth for no reason. Yeah, you so, want to lose all your teeth. Yeah. yeah. And the moment, and the moment, uh, the the animal uh, has weak muscles, mm-hmm. it really there's a there's a syndrome called sudden death syndrome. Mm-hmm. It really, especially chicken, it really gets to the chicken. Yes. The sudden death syndrome. You just wake up in the morning, go look at your chicken and just find that it's already dead. Mm-hmm. And then I, uh, I, I, I noticed that most people, when an animal dies, they're mm-hmm. like, you should slaughter it before it dies. When it oh, almost yeah, dies. Yeah, yeah, when it like, dies, I also you don't know had the that. Yeah, I've now, had that. Now you can't eat. But our oh, chicken well, broilers, these ones that are passed through breeding, the when you find it, it's dead. Yeah, like the Muslims, they don't eat anything dead. Yes. Like that's why in butcheries they don't like sell dead meat. Huh. Yeah, they ensure that the animal is alive before they slaughter it because it is believed that like the Muslims, they don't eat anything that is dead. Mm. Yeah. But as a farmer, when you when you're having the the breed the breeded type, the ones that have gone through breeding. Mm-hmm. And you find the chicken is dead, mm-hmm. and you know very well what you'll be doing to that chicken. Just slaughter it because yeah. the other one has caused the sudden death syndrome. Yes, because the muscles now become weak, mm-hmm. they get so tired they can't they can't walk. And yes. animal is a good animal can move. Yeah, when your animal is lying down. That animal is sick, mm-hmm. and you have to look for a veterinary doctor, mm-hmm. which most people don't do. Yeah, people just, people are so ignorant, and it's, it's not good. Yes, when you have an animal and you see it, it's so tired. It's just there. It's just walking as if yes. it doesn't want to walk. Yes, you have to look for the veterinary doctor to take care of it. Yeah, it's okay. Advisable. Yeah, okay. And to our subtopic of feeding and watering animals. Okay, there is also ensuring that the animals are living in a clean environment. Upon the like, you can't just leave your animal living a uh, piled cow dung. Maybe let's say cows. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like it is good that you make sure that your animal is staying in a clean environment by removing that cow dung and then making ensuring that the the it's called the home the stead. Yes, yeah. The stead is <laughs> the, the shed. The, the shed. The yeah. cow shed. It's called the cow shed, yeah, where the uh, the cows live. Yes. You ensure that all the dung are is okay. removed mm-hmm. to prevent the animals from living in an uncomfortable environment, and also because it can. There is a lot of diseases that can be found in that cow dung, like pests, like a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. insects. It can like in like they can live inhabit in the animals' fur mm-hmm. if you are not very careful in cleaning the animals, the cow dung, the the cow dung. And also ensure that you feed the animals with the right mm-hmm. with the right food. Yes. Uh, like for the cows. Mm-hmm. Even when they are grazing, if you if you really can't afford the napier grass, this yes, the napier grass or yeah. even any other food that animals are given. When mm-hmm. you are grazing, ensure that they don't take any other material apart from the food that they are supposed to eat. Yeah. Uh, you'll find that when cows they take polythene paper or even the the sacks. They mm-hmm. Yeah, they eat They'll those die. sacks. Yeah. yeah, it's not good for the animals. Yeah, it's not good for their health. Yeah. It makes them like it goes. That nylon goes there and uh, prevents the digestion process. Mm-hmm. So the animals may might might end up dying. So ensure you're so keen when mm-hmm. you're grazing. Yeah, ensure you're so keen when you're grazing. Ensure that there's no other uh, bad material. Yeah. That is on the field that will make your animal, or even if you if you realize because uh-huh. there are there are surgeons who deal with the animals, yeah, yeah. the veterinary, that, yes, veterinary. the veterinary surgeons. Yeah. When you realize that your animal has taken something strange, mm-hmm. ensure you you reach. Don't be ignorant. Ensure you reach the veterinary surgeon. Yeah. So that they, they can come and save your your animal. Yeah, take them. them to the vet. Yeah. To the yeah, and also like you, you know, a lot of people say that the cow dung, it's it's always so like huge. Yeah. 
like when, when you remove it it's a lot of work yes i know that's a lot of work but also you know that cow dung is very helpful and also useful yes. because you can use that cow dung like for us we use that cow dung as pastoralists mm-hmm. you you we use that cow dung mm-hmm. to to build our houses oh. like when you, you you put the sticks and then you apply the cow dung mm-hmm. To prevent the Do you cold cow dung or even use soil yeah you can no we, yeah. we use only cow dung like you can also use soil but for us we use only cow <laughs> that's dung. why you have so, so yeah. many animals so, yeah so we use cow dung to to we put it on the on the walls of the house mm-hmm. That house, the house we use, we use sticks to build the house, and then we put the cow dung on the walls of the the house. Mm-hmm. So that cow dung, it prevents the nini, the it prevents the light from enter a lot of light from entering inside the house, and also it prevents the it's called uh it prevents there are certain types of insects that that the cow dung repels that are not like. They usually disturb people at night when they sleep. So that cow dung keeps the insects away. And also, so it's very useful. And can, you can also use that cow dung as a fertilizer. Before you move on, I'm interested in knowing something here. Mm-hmm. How many days do you take before you settle into that house that you face with a cow dung? Hey, it's, you can even sleep that day inside How that house. How do you sleep house. with that? <laughs> is that smell? With that we, smell? We are pastoral. We love the smell <laughs> of animals. You see? <laughs> so for us, like... It's it's a scent that we are used to. It's something that we've grown like we have grown up in that kind of an environment. Mm-hmm. So everything that about the animals makes us feel so good. So it's something that we are used to. It's something that that is so special to us. So some people can come and say, "Wow, why are you sleeping in this?" Yes, I'm also wondering. Yeah, but but we love that environment. You know, when you love animals, mm-hmm. everything about animals is very good and very positive. So. For us, that is something good. We use that cow dung in various activities, doing very many things. With you it. can even use the cow dung for farming. Yeah. Not, not necessarily for fertilizer. Only cow dung, also any other animal. Yeah, any other animal. Yeah. You can use it for farming as a as a fertilizer. Yeah. And then there's something that I recently there's something that I recently realized. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Tell us. <laughs> it's it's something so weird. Mm-hmm. I found it in uh, in Luo land. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those Enough. people they can take cow dung. Uh-huh. You see the dry ones. Okay. I, I'm not advising you to do this, okay. but I saw it. I saw it somewhere. Okay. <laughs> in Yanza. <laughs> mm-hmm. They take the dry cow dung. Mm-hmm. In my French, they call they call that food like they take the the the, the dry ones. Mm-hmm. There's a way they cook it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they cook the cow dung. Cook it. <laughs> like the cow dung, they cook the cow yes. dung. I, do you mean that they, they take the cow dung and then put it in a so actually it's and not cook it. the dry one. It's uh-huh. the, the fresh. The, the fresh, fresh one. one. Yes. They cook them like they they just put into a sphere and then place I don't it in the jiko. I, I don't really know how they cook it, but mm-hmm. the result they have a name for after cooking it, they mm-hmm. call it in my French, they call it ojuri. And, and they then, claim it's so sweet. And it's cow dung. Like they eat cow, they literally <laughs> eat cow dung. That is the first I've ever had. It was, I, I also found it weird and it's from my place. Mm-hmm. I found it so weird mm-hmm. because how do you even eat fresh cow dung? How do you even cook? Maybe they maybe, maybe they have their own reasons. I've, maybe. Never, I've never tested it, but those uh-huh. who have tested it are telling me that it's sweet. I'll try testing it next time. Actually, okay. I'm, we should I'm try cooking. Myself that challenge. We, we should try cooking it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> It's successful because you don't know the products they're uh-huh. using. Okay, you can consult them and then we can try cooking it someday. And then we can tell our audience how the experience uh, was. It must be poisoning it too. Mm-hmm. It can be poisoned and I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it might be poisoned, yes. yes. But if you have seen someone you know eating it, then you, you should consult I've that person people. and ask them. I think they're even selling it in, in some big bandas down there. What I knew is that we, you can also use cow dung to, as a source of fuel. You can like you can, there is a way they do it. I don't know if they combine it with the soil or what, but I just saw that you can use cow dung mm-hmm. to to make charcoal. It's like charcoal mm-hmm. or coal. I don't know. It's coal or charcoal. Mm-hmm. That, but they use it for cooking. Mm. Yeah. And and oh, that that one is not animal waste. Can you use animal waste to create gas? I don't. I don't know. I've never had that. Tell though. us in the comment section if you have any idea whether yeah. you can use. <laughs> Animal waste 
Okay, yeah. we are also animals. Yeah, we can. <laughs> <laughs> but we are not cows. <laughs> we are not cows, but we are also or animals. Goats. Yes. If, if we are know, human. If you know how, how we can use mm-hmm. the animal waste to create gas, you can yeah. share with us in the comment section so that we also get to learn. Yeah. And that our viewers, others, other viewers also get to learn about uh, the waste if it can be used for yeah gas. yeah that will be a very useful information if you would like to provide to us or if something like that exists <laughs> or is not then you guys will be able to tell us also the animal waste i've seen some toilets some toilets being built in different schools mm-hmm. uh, they're built in a way that when you go to actually the latrines when you go to the latrines mm-hmm. when you drop your waste there's a space down there Mm-hmm. It's not being taken into the hole like the kawaidas that we know. Mm-hmm. It's being taken out there, and then after some time, farmers come to pick them. Mm-hmm. When when they come to harvest those things, they really smell. You can't even stand like there. Like they they smell a lot. Uh, you can't even sit there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like wh- what kind of like, what kind of and human waste? You oh human waste. Yes. You're talking about human waste. Yes, <laughs> because okay. they are also animals. They are taking human waste for what? They take for fertilizer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard that they use human waste for fertilizer. And also, I heard that they use human waste. I don't know. They <laughs> Like, you know, they believe that, like, when I was in primary school, we used to believe that the they waste, the, like, that the inter- industries use the waste, like, the human waste to, like, to, I don't know, to produce water. Mm. Like Water? It, yeah. For drinking? Yes. Like we used to believe that, uh, of which I've also had some of theories about that. Mm-hmm. They say that they pass it through, I don't know, distillation, several several processes, mm-hmm. and then they produce water. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether those are innovations, inventions. I don't know what they are, but you can use waste. Uh, it's a, it's not fertilizer actually; mm-hmm. it's manure mm-hmm. because fertilizers are manufactured. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the wa- the animal waste, the human waste, are used. Uh, as manure. Mm-hmm. In a side sana when you when you're a farmer and you get a, a school that can offer you the <laughs> the waste for the students. Yeah. <laughs> as <laughs> much as it will smell. <laughs> yeah, it will smell yes, but it will be a, it will a benefit. Be yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And even when you when you when you're keeping your livestock, even if it's for sale, mm-hmm. just like we were saying before, they should not uh they yeah, be give them so some space to in breathe. Areas, yes, in one space. Mm-hmm. If the, even, it's, even if it's for selling, even mm-hmm. if you have a lot of them, I don't know how you do it in your place. Mm-hmm. I want to believe that you just keep them together. How do like you do the it? animals. Yes. Yeah, we keep them together in one state. But that like is not one. good, right? I don't know, but that is what I, I know about it because mm-hmm. they take a lot of animals. We have like, we, we used to have like more than 300 goats mm-hmm. and they used to live together in one stead except for the 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 young ones mm-hmm. they take the young ones to another different different house mm-hmm. like a, a small house mm-hmm. like yeah the young ones stay there because they if they stay inside the homestead they must be like the the animals mm-hmm. the the i don't know the goats mm-hmm. the older goats might step into them or what? Yeah, yeah, my step and into how do them they, and then how kill do they them. Feed? How do they breastfeed? Because the, the young animals should always breastfeed. So in the morning, when like when we wake up in the morning, we remove the goats. We we, we remove the goats that are like the mothers, the lactating, the, the mothers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've already given. Yeah, I've already given human beings. Yeah. yeah, I've already given them the the human characteristics. <laughs> anyway. The 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 ones that are that are like the, yeah, the mothers yeah the mothers yeah the mother goats yeah <laughs> because uh-huh. they they put them aside uh-huh. and then they just, they now open the gate for the small ones mm-hmm. so each and every goat knows it's it's yeah. young one oh yeah it's always like that you just and then the the people now are going to milk the the goats while while they are. They are sucking their mothers. Mm. Yeah. I've never known. I've never known that. When they are suckling, the the my mother now like or me, mm-hmm. and then we milk them. We because the more the 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 young one is suckling the goat, the the milk increases. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm, I'm getting to learn a lot from today's topic. Yeah. yeah. I, I, <laughs> I mean, you guys are going to learn a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's Saburu here, a pastoralist, a typical pastoralist <laughs> in the house. So you're going to learn a lot. Now that we have a Saburu in the house, you yeah. we'll get to learn so, so, so much. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have any other thing that you can add. Oh, yeah. There is also another topic of funding and transportation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, according to how you handle your animals mm-hmm. during transportation mm-hmm. also, and also how you handle your animal in general. Mm-hmm. So, you make sure that your animals, after ensuring that your animals are living in a clean environment, mm-hmm. ensure that there is diet, like they are on a good diet, ensure that they are eating well. Mm-hmm. Now, there comes transportation. Maybe you're transporting your animals to a market or maybe you're migrating to another place and then transporting your animals. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to transportation, mm-hmm. you ensure that the pregnant, the pregnant animals are well taken care of. So to avoid them from, from experiencing problems during the transportation period. And also, the animals have to, the animals have to be, they, they should be, kept in a place whereby they are able to move freely and also they should have access to water. Because when you travel with an animal or when you transport an animal for a long period of time without giving them water or food, they might end up dying, starving to death. Mm-hmm. So that is another thing to consider. I'm talking about transportation. I just heard you mention that uh, oh, when you're transporting an, an animal that is pregnant, mm-hmm. I should handle it well. Mm-hmm. Actually, let us let me focus on the marketing first before we get back to what you are talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that there's a, there's a large market mm-hmm. for animals that are pregnant. Actually, they bring lots yeah, and lots of money yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's like you're buying two animals. Yes. But now, at a, it depends with the price, but it's like you're buying two animals. And also, it depends with the market where you are getting the animals from. Mm-hmm. Uh, I learned that since you guys have so, so many animals, mm-hmm. buying animals from you is cheaper. Yeah, it's very cheap mm-hmm. when buying animals. So for you, like, you just take one animal that is good enough, that is fat, or maybe uh, this animal is, like, you just want, like, maybe you just want money. Of course, when you say something, you want money. Yes. So you take it to the market, and then... You sell them like it's always cheaper because you have a lot of animals there. Mm-hmm. So for us, you can buy a goat at three thousand shillings. Yeah, a very huge goat at three thousand shillings. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, when uh, animals from from your side, mm-hmm. you're, you're from Samburu. Mm-hmm. I have to believe that animals from your side can survive uh, in some areas. Is it true? Do you no, think? I think. Uh-huh. Animals from our side mm-hmm. are even more better surviving in other areas than this area. Like, are you sure? Yeah. Say because of what? Mm-hmm. Because it's a semi-arid area. Mm-hmm. It's an area that is prone to drought. Mm-hmm. It's like the, our animals have adapted to such kind of conditions. But like, let's take an example of, of humans, mm-hmm. of human beings. Okay. Uh, people in areas like Turkana, mm-hmm. like they don't get to have so much food. Mm-hmm. So when food is taken to that place, mm-hmm. and you find them taking so, so much of it because it's something they have not been seeing, mm-hmm. you realize that they get sick. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm just picturing it in this way. I'm, I'm just picturing it this way. Uh-huh. Animals from your side, mm-hmm. do they really see green grass all the time? I don't, I don't want you to like, reason like someone who is in town. No, reason no, no. Reason like someone who is in the rural area. Okay, you know, we, we rarely experience rain. Mm. So when you see that, Nini, that when they see the, when the, there is a rainy season and they have like, there is a lot of grass, mm. you know, the animals tend to get sick. There is something called, I don't know, they bloat, according oh. to me, how I have observed. Mm-hmm. Because I've lived with those animals, I know how they behave mm-hmm. when the season is good. Mm-hmm. So during the rainy seasons, the animals tend to eat a lot. So mm-hmm. when they eat, you know, they have never like they have stayed a long time without getting that kind of food. So when they see that grass, they tend to eat a lot to an extent that they bloat. So that thing always like during that rainy season, we find that we lose we lose a lot of animals due to that because they overeat. When they overeat, they die. So definitely, animals from your place can't survive from. from these cold areas that they... no, not really not yes. really because you're really supporting your animals <laughs> no 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 i'm just i'm just giving according to my 
like according to my you understand yeah according to my understanding or according to my opinion it's just an opinion uh-huh. it's not something that i'm very sure of uh-huh. but i think they can survive because they have already been exposed to harsh environmental conditions why shouldn't they survive in this good conditions they end up floating and die just like you said yeah they will end up doing that uh-huh. but when they come to uh, uh, another area it's likely like if you take the animals from uh, an area like like an area that is expre- like th- that is experiencing enough rainfall and then you take it to the areas that you that they lack rain mm-hmm. like our area mm-hmm. and then you take them to drought areas mm-hmm. they are likely to die they will not even survive for long because they die. they are used to luxury you see but our animals they can survive in these areas but the animals that are used to such conditions can't survive in drought areas because they are used to like here hey, Ian, you're really supporting your animals <laughs> you know you our animals are very strong if you want to buy animals <laughs> go to samburu ah, 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 ah. <laughs> like you've been paid to promote to Any. promote the animals from <laughs> Yeah. I haven't been paid. It's just the love for the animals, you see. So when you grow in an environment where there is a lot of livestock, you develop that love for animals. Mm-hmm. Animals, like even if you see someone like harassing the goat, maybe he's just beating the goat for doing something foolish. Maybe the goat has gone, like, gotten into his or her garden, and then you start chasing the goat, throwing stones. It's very painful seeing that the person throwing stones at the goat because you know that goat. Hey, if I get that goat, that is money, that is milk, <laughs> that is meat. You, you, see, have, to, you <laughs> have to be money minded. I'm yeah. telling you, when you're, when you're starting such a yeah. such a project, mm-hmm. you have to be money minded. Yes. Yeah. We're still getting to learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ayan is educating us. Uh, yeah. The lady from Samburu. <laughs> the lady is educating us today. We have to know about how pastoral pastoralists. Pastoralist, pastoralist. Ah, kizungu wewe. <laughs> Imekukata, ah, imepotea. Imekata, kizungu imenikata. Still followers, you're still live on YouTube, uh-huh. at Afamas Media on Facebook, at Afamas Media on Twitter, at Afamas with a Z underscore media. Uh-huh. Our website, www.afamasmedia.com. Send in your comments, send in your feedbacks. We are here to answer all of them. I don't know, Ayan, if you can read for us some of the comments on our uh-huh. Facebook page. Okay. So guys, continue sending, continue sending a lot of a lot of questions because we are ready. We are here to answer. We are here to help you understand more be- understand things. So, if you don't if you also have questions for us, don't forget to send any questions for us. We still live on on the on all our social media platforms. This is a farmers media where we connect, we learn and we grow. Yeah. So as you continue, uh, we have not talked about a uh, vaccination of animals. When you have your animals, you have to vaccinate them in mm-hmm. order for, for them to remain healthy and in order for these diseases not to get into them. Yeah. That's a way of loving your animals. When you're treating an animal, treat them like, like it's your own child. Yeah, handle them with care. Yes. I I was just saying the other day that when you're harvesting fruits, harvest harvest them as if you are harvesting eggs. Yes. Now today I'm saying when you're when you are handling an animal, handling hand, handle that animal like you're handling your own child. I keep yeah. the H, the H and the S. Where I come from, where? Where? <laughs> Nikubaya. You have to understand. <laughs> I'm a new feed, so yes. The H and the S. Really disturbs me yeah. a lot. Uh-huh. Ayan, mm-hmm. you're really educating us today. Yeah, thank you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mary. You've also educated us. Uh, yeah. I just realized that I'm not, I'm not so good with mm-hmm. livestock, but that's why you're here. Yeah. yeah. That's why I'm here with you yeah. to help me go through this journey. <laughs> help me go through this yeah, journey. and also help our fellow farmers mm-hmm. outside there to understand about animal welfare and livestock keeping mm-hmm. yeah we're still here to talk about sprout i don't know if you can repeat for our viewers the website that we were talking about okay uh okay we are going to tell you about uh, okay if you want to know more about sprout this is where the farmers connect learn and grow and also you'll be able to meet other experienced farmers and also be able to learn a lot from them so if you want to get all this information and also to connect with these amazing farmers and also to identify 
these amazing opportunities don't forget to tune in to sprout that is our website is www.sproutopenwebsite.com yeah we are championing for climate smart agriculture mm -hmm. yes we keep on championing for it you can get so educated when you visit the website that my co-host yeah just to mention okay yes and there is also someone who's, who is requesting to repeat so it's www dot sprout dot ah, it's w sorry it's www dot sprout open content dot com yeah don't forget to click into that website because i know you are going to learn a lot from that website yeah okay can see it's exactly 12 47 if you're still if you're joining us we are live this is our mid-morning show and we are still talking about animal welfare and livestock management mm -hmm. we are educating you more yeah uh, about how you can handle your animals mm -hmm. how you can ensure that your animals are healthy mm -hmm. and uh, now i want us to dive into the market section mm -hmm. how uh can we handle our animals in the markets you know uh, when you talk about transportation, mm -hmm. uh, I just in my in my area mm -hmm. when you're going to sell a cow, I have never seen them uh, carrying the cow in a vehicle. You just walk. Yeah, and, you walk with the cow. Yes. Yeah. You walk with the cow to the market. Now, when mm -hmm. we get to the market, mm -hmm. before you take your animals to the market, you have to know uh, how the market is mm -hmm. according to the animal you're having. Yeah. Mostly, uh, when you when you look in, you realize that uh, mostly chicken. Mm -hmm. The the people really buy chicken during the December holiday. Uh huh. Of course, you buy chicken. You want to celebrate this amazing year. Yeah. yeah. So during yeah. the when you when you want a good market for the chicken, mostly mm -hmm. apart from now, these people who do weddings in between weddings, funerals. Actually, people really eat chicken in the weddings i've never seen oh, so much wow, chicken, wow, wow. <laughs> chicken in the wedding. i've never attended a wedding where people eat chicken. i wish i wish i could attend one so oh, much. because you're from somewhere where people just eat cows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we eat goats and cows so on you have to uh, look the, at the market you have to mm -hmm. look at the market according to the animals that you're having mm -hmm. yes uh you can't just uh you can't just take chicken to a market where people don't so many people don't really need chicken yeah remaining with the chicken and eating all of them if you're yeah. growing it to eat if you're keeping it to eat not growing if you're keeping it to eat mm -hmm. it's fine yeah you can have it there mm -hmm. raka, mm -hmm. pressure. Now, that is what we call farming with passion yeah so you're keeping your animals for passion yeah when you want to sell look at the time yeah Ensure it, it's the right time. Yeah, and also ensure before you sell your chicken or your cows or your goat or whatever animal you are going to sell to them in the market, make sure that your animal is well fed before taking it to the market. Because anything can happen. You can you can you can take your animal to the market and then find out that the animal is dying because of anger. Just make sure that it is well fed, it is eating well. And then it's full, and then take it to the market. And it's healthy. Yeah. You can't just go and sell to people an animal that is sick. <laughs> yeah, that That's is how not you good. Lose customers. That's yeah. how you lose customers. Now you have to ensure that the animal is checked. Mm -hmm. uh, it's vaccinated. Yes. Yes, it's very healthy. It's full, so that when you take it to the market, those some bars they will just come check <laughs> yeah. that your animal and and they tell you that ah, this one I don't think it. Your animal is fat. Yeah, and I know, animal and I, is just full. Yeah, and I also know that a lot of people, when they, majority of people, they transport their chicken using a box. Like most of the people put the chickens in the box and then uh, they transport them. Mm -hmm. So while transporting them, I've experienced that in the buses that are boarded. So while uh, while transporting the chickens, make sure that there is enough ventilation. Mm -hmm. Put some. In, like put enough holes in that box so that you ensure that the, the chicken are breathing well mm -hmm. yeah so that you may not end up losing your chickens mm -hmm. yeah. and also when you're handling uh, your animals uh, let's talk about environmental mm -hmm. impacts that mm -hmm. uh, environmental impacts on the on the animals yeah you handle the waste you handle the waste well mm -hmm. you ensure the place where your animals are 
are sleeping or are kept. It's very clean. It's very clean. Mm-hmm. You, you should not, let me say, you should not waste the waste. Yeah. <laughs> Don't waste the waste. Don't waste the waste. <laughs> <laughs> because the waste is also valuable very, in its own. Yes. The waste, the waste is also very important depending on the animals mm-hmm. that you have. Mm. I don't know if uh, you... Except the cat. It's a cat an animal. <laughs> yes, a cat is an animal. A cat is a good animal. Is, why is, why is, is, is like, except is, the cat? Like, <laughs> you don't love cats. <laughs> like, is a cat part of a livestock? Like, can yes. You keep, like, can you keep... <laughs> People keep cats. You okay. never had a, a farmer is just having cats. And some like people you're like farming. Cats. Like yes. you're doing cats. Cat yes. farming. <laughs> You've wow. never had of cats. Wow, wow, wow! I've never had of that. <laughs> Honestly, yes. I've never had of that. There are people who just keep cats. By mm-hmm. the way, mm. I don't know if they they just sell cats. You know, they they are they are cat lovers. Mm-hmm. The same with their dog lovers. Mm-hmm. They're also cat lovers. So maybe you can sell a cat. <laughs> Though I've never sold one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've never sold. You should one. you should try sell one. If you know. have, <laughs> <laughs> it's easier. Oh. It's, it's easier selling a cat abroad than mm-hmm. <laughs> than in Africa. Okay. In Africa, you know, when you have a cat, I think the cat gives birth to the kittens. Mm-hmm. You just hear your neighbor telling you, "Eh, Mama Yan, ni mo na pakaya ko ibedi fungua." Yeah, ni pe mo ja. Ni pe mo ja. Or you extend it with something. I don't know yeah. if you've seen that. I've seen that because uh, my neighbor used to have lots of cats. And also there are rats who used like to disturb to mm-hmm. disturb uh, the peace of everybody there. So when the the cats used to like the, the cats used to come to our house and then they eat those rats. So it was something good. Mm-hmm. So we used to we used to like my mother my mother like when the the cat gave birth, my the neighbor gave my mother one one kitten and also he distributed other kittens to other neighbors. Mm-hmm. So it's something that I've seen. Okay, you don't you, you what did your mother exchange? No, he thing? didn't do anything because the the neighbor was like, These cats are too many for me. So let me give you some because I know this cat of mine is going to give birth to another kittens. <laughs> yeah. So so he, he distributed the kittens around the neighborhood and also left himself with only one. I think it was six or seven kittens. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of our viewers is asking, actually a colleague is asking, how often do you take your animals to the veterinary? Maybe, like, do you, by the way, Samburu, do you take your animals to the vet? Oh, there are so many until you can't, you just I, call a vet home. Like, for us, uh-huh. like, they, they buy, they, is a, like, they do vets, like, themselves, except for the camels and the cows. Mm-hmm. So, for the camels, they, they, they call the vets, like, how really, often? really, really. Re- so really? I don't know. I don't, I don't know about the camels and the cows because uh, I don't. I just know that they usually see the vets uh, giving the medicine to the camels and the cows. But I see them like once in a while. It's not that often. It's once in a while. Okay, but right. the the goats and the the goats and the, the sheep. sheep uh-huh. uh, the nini. My like my dad used to buy medicine and then they they. They give the medicine themselves to the animals so using a syringe. Your dad became his own vet. Yeah, like everybody, <laughs> everybody in that area, they do the vet. But I think uh, they buy the nini, the the medicine from the veterinary, uh-huh. and then they come. They are being instructed by the veterinary how to do them, and then they put it in the water, and then they take the syringe and then make sure that they inject each and every animal. That is how they do in our area because the vets are very minimal in our area oh. i think it's only two or three so they they educate them on how to attend to their animals by giving them such instruction medicine they buy medicine then they go and inject to their animals okay if you're not from samburu then you have to be taking your animals even you call the vet home because uh-huh. you can't be taking your animals to the vet every day kila subui yeah anytime you should be taking the animal to the vet unatoka na ngombe you go with it yeah pl- plus you just call the vet home mm-hmm. and uh, i think uh cows okay let me just not specify on cows animals uh-huh. have different types of vaccinations uh-huh. so if you're a farmer you should be conversant with when you are your animal should be vaccinated. Yes. Uh, considering when the animal was born. Yeah. Yeah. Or even when you started owning it, because maybe that animal was not born in your place. You just bought it. Mm-hmm. Ensure that uh, immediately you own an animal. 
you call the vet to check it, mm-hmm. vaccinate it if yes. it's necessary. Yeah. After vaccinating it, maybe now you can consult with the with the veterinary doctor to tell you when next you should vaccinate mm-hmm. the, the animal. And yes. also, in case the animal has any injury, mm-hmm. any injury in case you, you notice anything weird, with, with your animal you just have to call the vet don't mm-hmm. don't be your, the vet yourself yeah maybe you, you're not a professional there's a reason why the veterinary doctors are there mm-hmm. so you just call the professional to help you just like i mentioned before uh we have surgeons mm-hmm. that handle animals mm-hmm. so instead of leaving your animal to die because of something that you you don't know mm-hmm. you better call the surgeon yeah. Not the not the human surgeon, <laughs> the animal <laughs> surgeon. Mm-hmm. There, there are surgeons that uh, actually have a friend of mine who is a, a surgeon who handles animals, and they handle the animals very very well. You get yeah. surprised after mm-hmm. your animal has been treated mm-hmm. or operated on, the animal will just heal and uh, go back to its normal self. Yes. So it's better you just uh, immediately you're owning an animal, ensure you invite a veterinary doctor mm-hmm. to check on the animal uh, and uh, the vet will advise you more uh-huh. on when you can uh, vaccinate the animal again. Uh, in my village, I also see that uh, there, are, there are occasions mm-hmm. where the vets are called maybe into schools yeah. when the schools are closed. Uh-huh. They call the veterinary doctors, mm-hmm. and then you take your dogs or even cats there to be vaccinated. Okay. Yes. I've seen it's a it's a project. I think it's been going on countrywide. Mm-hmm. You take your cats and your dogs to be vaccinated, so that in case mm-hmm. there is another wild dog mm-hmm. or a wild cat that wants to infect your own, mm-hmm. it's not easy for your own cat or your own dog to be infected wow affected. that's good yeah. oh, oh it's i think it's called the the nini i don't know the injection yeah again it's rabies yes yeah, yeah. rabies yeah. Oh, on such days the dogs really make very nice. serious yeah you have a school next to your home <laughs> well, our, they are the, vaccinating dogs yeah the doc the, the doctors used to go around our village vaccinating each and every dog and a lot of dogs used to catch that this is called rabies hmm. so they used to buy um liver they they buy liver and then they inject certain certain medicine inside that kills the dogs so because those dogs dogs are, are dangerous to everybody else in the community mm-hmm. they buy uh the liver and then they insert that medicine inside there and then they draw it around the village mm-hmm. so those when they, those dogs come they eat that that liver and then they die so that is how they used to get rabies to get rid of rabies dogs in mm-hmm. our area so that time mm-hmm. they tell all the villagers that there is a doctor coming mm-hmm. and he's going to get rid of all the rabies dogs. Mm-hmm. So if you have your dog like laundering around, mm-hmm. littering around, you just make sure that you you keep it away from the streets mm-hmm. because it might it it might end up eating that. So that day they give uh people announcement about the doctor coming and those activities happening. So when they do that, they ensure that all the villagers have kept their dogs away and then the rabies dogs will be or the street dogs, mm-hmm. they have they be left around. So the doctors come dropping those liver, and then the dogs eat, and then they die. Mm-hmm. After then, they remove those dogs and then dispose them. And the, those are the, the dogs, dogs that are infected with rabies. Yeah, the ones that have been not that, that have not been injected. All oh, the dogs that have not, okay. not been injected. So, so they the catch moment, that disease. The moment they take, if if uh, your dog had been injected mm-hmm. and it takes that liver, nothing mm-hmm. happens to it. It will happen. It will die. That's why they are telling the people to keep their dogs away from the streets. Oh, so you, okay. you, you, you make sure that their dog is in your home. Mm-hmm. So the rest of the dogs are being eliminated, the ones with the rabies. So if it you leave your dog and go like you leave your, your dog and then it goes to eat that liver, that is none of the doctor's <laughs> concern. Because that was like it was announced. Mm-hmm. Everybody was given the awareness mm-hmm. of the doctor coming. Okay. And I've also experienced about the Nini, the surgeons, but mm-hmm. according to us, they, they are traditional surgeons in our area. So, you know, people have a lot of animals to an extent that you can't be able to take all of them to the vet or, or the vet can't come to attend to all of them. Mm-hmm. Like Others even have more than 800 cows or more than 800 uh, camels. Mm-hmm. So it's very 
had for the veterinary to attend to all those animals. So sometimes you find that the animal has a lamp, a very huge lamp. It contains pus inside and stuff, and you don't know what to do. The animal is in pain. So there is a traditional doctor, which they call the doctor, and then the doctor give like does the surgery onto the animal and then removes the all that thing. The traditional doctors, they're not going to... They have not gone to school. No, they have not gone to school. <laughs> they just know. They just have that knowledge. So they 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 cut the animal and then they remove that thing. Then they nurse the animal. They make sure that the animal is good. And then the animal is left at home. If the animal is sick, it is left at home, and then the rest go to the field. Hmm. So the one that is left at home, a person is is given like a person will be given in charge. Like, the one will be t- like they will select a person mm-hmm. will take charge in looking after that one animal and then that animal will be taken to a good place and then given food water like very easily it like doesn't have human. to go yeah it doesn't have to go to like to the field to look for food the food is brought to the animal and then the water it's like they ensure that the animal is in a good like they treat the animal in a way that if you see like this you just be like wow, is this an animal a person? <laughs> I think at some point yeah. I would want to be such an animal. Anyway, yeah, we are still championing for climate smart agri. We are uh-huh. still championing for climate smart agri. When we went for a break, there are videos that uh, my producer was playing mm-hmm. on our screens. I hope you saw them. Yeah, uh, you can get to learn a lot from those videos. Yes, yes. Cool. Because we know that uh, climate, like according to research and also all the websites, all the agricultural sites, the main thing that is championing every farmer out there is climate. Because climate is unpredictable. Climate can change any time, any day. You can't know. So climate is something that every farmer is, uh, is looking forward to knowing how to Go forward about it, and you should also handle your animals according to the climate change. Uh, yes. There's no way you're going to release your animals just to stay out there in the rain and it's yeah. The moment you know that it's a, rain, a rainy season, know how to know how to handle your animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just suffering out there and it's raining. Yeah. Make sure they're in a dry place. Yeah. In a closed place where they're not rained on, because the moment your animals are rained on. They mm-hmm. definitely get sick. The moment yeah. they get sick, mm-hmm. now it is your problem. Yeah, you have to spend money yeah. to buy the medicine. Mm-hmm. You have to call the vet to mm-hmm. be injecting the animal until mm-hmm. it's, it will be well. And also, it's a 50-50 agenda. Yeah. Like you don't know whether your animal will survive yes. or it will not survive. That's why I'm against ignorance when you are into livestock keeping. Please, mm-hmm. don't be, don't yes. be an don't, ignorant person. Yeah, don't be an ignorant person because... That animal is your profit. Yeah. That's, I mean, that animal is your livelihood. So treat it with much care yeah. and handle it with care mm-hmm. because animals are also important. They are very important. Yeah. Continue sending in your comments. Uh, I hope I hope Stephanie. Stephanie asked about how often we should take the animals to the vet, mm-hmm. the veterinary doctor. Uh-huh. I hope she has been answered. Uh-huh. If you are a livestock keeper, yes. Stephanie, I hope you have been answered uh-huh. yes and guys don't forget to continue tuning in to this amazing show and we are going to talk to you about more and more and let's all connect grow and learn yes and also the feeding part uh different animals have different types of foods and i believe that uh there are some do i call them uh they bring some nutrients there are some mm-hmm. products that mm-hmm. you can get for the animals uh-huh. For example, the cows, the cows, they have some, I don't know how you call it if you are in your French language. Uh-huh. Uh, there's, a, there's a red, something like a red brick. It looks a red like a red brick. brick. Yes, but like, it's salt. Oh, it's salt. salt like we call it, cow. yeah, we call it salt for the cow. I don't know. There's a name for that. It's, it's, type, it's a type of a mineral. It's a mineral that is important to the cow's body or the goats, yeah. It's always there is a red one, there is a white one. And Actually, I've only I've only seen the red one. Yeah, there is a, a white one. one yeah, mm-hmm. they put it and then the goats they lick. They lick. They lick the the salt. It makes the cow like I don't know if it's it regains its appetite or what. But I just know that they usually they are usually given that type of salt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ensure ensure your animals have 
get enough nutrients mm-hmm. in order for them to be healthy. Yeah. Uh, just don't just sit and sit there and look at you. You're just excited about preparing <laughs> for the car, returning it in the evening, yeah. <laughs> bring it back, bring it, bringing it back in the evening, yeah. and yet it's not healthy. Yeah. At the end of the day, you you want to sell that animal. Yes. And uh, when we talk about cows, goats, nobody buys a product. Mm-hmm. Nobody buy, can buy an animal that is not healthy. Yes, of course. I won't buy an animal that's not healthy. Of course, I won't. Yes. Nobody of course, that. nobody can buy an animal that's not healthy. <laughs> you have to. You have to have a healthy animal in order mm-hmm. for you to get good money. Yes. Yes. You don't just take it to the market you meet the buyer you're in, insisting like for example when a goat is like eight thousand uh-huh. it should be eight thousand you're insisting for ten thousand and your your goat is not even healthy yeah it's <laughs> it's just a weakling that is i don't know it's struggling to walk yeah <laughs> no, no no healthy animal no money no money yes <laughs> ensure ensure your your animals are well, are healthy mm-hmm. actually they always say that health is wealth mm-hmm it does not only apply to the human beings. Yeah. It even applies to the animals. Those, those animals have feelings. Uh, when they are healthy, they will bring you wealth. If you are keeping your livestock for selling, when you keep them well and they become healthy enough, when you take them to the market, definitely you'll get good money. When yeah. your animals are weak, you'll stay with them, they will die and they will, you will, you'll be the one having losses yes. after keeping them for so long. Yeah, so, and also ensure that your animals, the housing, the housing of your animal, your animal are staying in a good place where, where they will not be affected with harsh weather conditions mm-hmm. like rains. Uh, yeah. So, if you put your animal in an open area and they are severe, like there is a, there is, there is a time where there is a lot of rain. So it will pour onto your animals and your animals will start getting sick. And co- You know, have you ever had a goat, like a, a goat coughing? Yes. It coughs. <laughs> like it coughs like a human being. Like I was like, wow, why is it coughing like this? So, so that is a result. That is another result of harsh weather conditions. Mm-hmm. So please make sure that your, your animals are in a good place, are in a good environment where they, are, they will not be affected with harsh environmental conditions and also the pests and predators. Actually, that story has reminded me of an experience I had some time back. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a friend of mine who was getting married. Uh-huh. And you know, uh, in our culture, uh-huh. when you're doing a traditional wedding, uh-huh. they bring cows. The man bring, brings cows to, okay. the, to the ladies' homestead okay. and goats. Uh-huh. So apparently... Where these animals had been bought from, mm-hmm. I think from that place, the animals are so used to sleeping outside. Uh-huh. Yes, okay. just outside, not inside a cow shed. Uh-huh. Now, this is a situation where they have been brought to a place where there is a cow shed. Uh-huh. That cow shed was, was made, was just constructed for them because <laughs> there were no wow. animals in that hole. Wow, okay. <laughs> now they were bringing new animals. Uh-huh. Now they constructed a cow shed for the, for the cows and the goats. Mm. When the cows got to that place, uh-huh. it was just okay. They were just outside. Kila kitu ilikuwa tu sawa. Until the man that brought the cows left. And mm-hmm. then it reached to ni- at uh-huh. night. It was now at night. Oh. The cows didn't want to go to the cow shed. Why? They are so used to sleeping outside. Uh-huh. Why, are you taking them? <laughs> Why are you taking them inside? They what? didn't want to... Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know how the farmer who was having them was handling them, but they were not used to being inside a cow shed. They were used like to a cow that. shed. The cow shed was like it had a rooftop, like a roof. Actually, these cows were used to just sleeping in the compound, mm-hmm. not inside a cow shed. Mm-hmm. Yes, you just take the ropes on a tree, and then they just sleep outside. Oh, okay. They were so used to okay. that. They were so stubborn until I. They slept outside on the first day. It was so hard for them to adapt. Okay. Yeah. I think that can be also another challenge because when you, when when you make sure, like when you ensure that your your cows are used to staying outside, of course they'll get used to such kind of an yeah. environment. Because when you put them inside a, an enclosed place, of course they'll struggle. Mm-hmm. They won't want to be in that place. They will want to go to their original habit, habitat. Ensure you ensure when you are having your animals. Treat them in a way that even you, when you take them to a different uh, area, or or even yes, when you take them to a different area, mm-hmm. they can adapt. Yeah, 
not that they want to sleep outside those cows embarrassed my friends <laughs> <laughs> for me I'll also be embarrassed by that so they, they, they seriously embarrass my friend because people, people now are wondering mm-hmm. ah, Connie, where are you getting mar- who are you getting married to and why is it that cows from that place sleep out they even make fun of you oh, sure wow. that when, okay. when you're having animals treat them in a way that when you release them they can survive yeah. in any environment yes yes we still live on YouTube at a farmers media on Facebook we are live at a farmers media continue sending in your comments on mm-hmm. Twitter is a farmers with a z underscore media and the web on our website www.afarmersmedia.com I'm still here with a Regina I the Samburu uh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's actually it's a Turkana name Turkana name yes Regina Ayanai. Regina Ayanai. Yes. The, the, the name sounds like a good It's hard. Name. It's hard, Mary. <laughs> name Mary, sounds... I know you won't pronounce that, so don't struggle to say it. Don't. <laughs> That's why I'm used to calling her Ayan, by the way. Mm-hmm. She's, she's really enlightening us. Yes. On how they keep their livestock. But I just realized that in your place, it's mm-hmm. so much traditional. Yeah, of now, course. Now people from, my, people from these other areas, we can't. We don't know any surgeon who is a traditional surgeon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For us, you can really find that like, people are so good at it. Uh-huh. Like they are so good at it. I used to see my uncle like nursing a broken leg of a goat. Mm. Like they put a a rubber band mm-hmm. and then on the goat and then they tie it. Mm-hmm. So the goat like when it's walking, it's limping. For like maybe three to four days and then it's healed completely. Mm-hmm. Like a broken leg. On on the traditional part, I've only seen I've only seen how they cut the tail of a I don't know if they do it in your place. They cut the, the, the tail, tail of, of a sheep. sheep. <laughs> yes, I know they do that. They cut the tail of a sheep. I don't know. I've never like I've never asked for the reason for that, but mm-hmm. I just know that they cut the the tail of a sheep. I don't know if it's because it's heavy or <laughs> they need that fat. I think, <laughs> I, think I they only cut. Do they any cut for females? For males, I always, the, the, the male sheep, they have big, big, big tails. Do they yeah. cut for males? I don't know. I don't know. But I, no, do, the, do they the cut tail. for, no, they cut for men. They don't cut for the female. Then they cut it for it to grow so big because I've never seen a, a male sheep that has a small, <laughs> a small tail. I don't know about that, but I, I know about the goats. Like, they cut the goats, the goats ears. Oh. One of them. Or two, Cutting like, or piercing? They cut. Like, I have a video mm-hmm. of my father. Maybe I can post somewhere. You can post it for us. Yeah, you know, I have a video of my media. father cutting a, cutting a goat's ear mm-hmm. with a knife. Mm-hmm. Like, one, like, he cut the, the goat's ear, one of the ears, mm-hmm. and then the other one, like, he just pierces it like this. Do like, the goat feel the pain? Yes, it so, was crying. So I should educate him about human slow, about, no. about the goat slaughter. You know, no, he's doing that because it is uh, like to create a sense of identity. Does, does he handle the goat well? Yes, like each and every goat, they have cut the, the ear in a certain way. All the tribes around that area, all the people around that area, they cut the goats in a certain way. Like they cut the ear, like all the, everybody knows oh. his god so it's according to clans a certain clan mm-hmm. cuts a, a goat in this like in this way another person cuts his god in this way so there is different types of how they cut their gods the ears of their god that is for identity you know you can go to another area and then find a similar god like he was there is nothing that differentiates it <laughs> you see so for you to create that this is my god you have to put a mark so others they put the the paint on their gods <laughs> so you know you are God. So you can find five five similar gods in one place, but you know this is my God. Before you talk yeah. about before you talk about how to handle the an animal so that it doesn't feel pain, uh-huh. it, it just reminded me of an experience I had when I was young. Uh-huh. Uh, we loved rabbits. Actually, my brother and I we really loved rabbits wow. when we were young, so we didn't have a rabbit. Uh-huh. And our neighbors had a white rabbit. Rabbit, okay. <laughs> We decided to go pick the rabbit. I don't know if we were taking care of that rabbit well. I that time we were young. Mm-hmm. 
but I think we really tried. Okay. We wanted to own the rabbit first of all. Okay. We just taking care of the rabbit. You want to own the rabbit that, that is, is not, not yours. Our... <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I'm we took the rabbit. Uh-huh. Went home with it. We stole it. You know, our neighbors were not around. Wow. Went home with it. Okay. And we started coloring the rabbit. Mm-hmm. Our rabbit was rainbow. Now. <laughs> It you, are coloring it. You, are, you, you are coloring it, it using what? It had green, it had, wait, it had green, we had colors, those ones for kids. <laughs> oh my god, it had that's, green, that's it insane. It had red, yellow, mm-hmm. those rainbow colors. Mm-hmm. And then now our neighbors came to look for, okay. for their rabbits. Okay. We didn't hide the rabbit. Mm-hmm. We came out with the rabbit and we told them, this is not your rabbit. Your rabbit was white. Okay. Ours has all, has all these colors. Wow, 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 <laughs> wow. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, they took back the rabbit with all the colors they could not wash. Now that was oh. the only colored rabbit in the village. Wow, that's yes. that's an interesting story. We should publish it. It's an anyway. <laughs> anyway, let me talk about taking care of animals again. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you want to, like for cows, I'm not sure if we dehorn other other animals, but mm-hmm. I know cows. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it gets to a point that you want to dehorn a. Uh, cow mm-hmm. that is if the cow now becomes stubborn and is hitting hitting people mm-hmm. aimlessly that mm-hmm. is not good now you have to dehorn the the cow don't do it on your own yeah this is why we are advising and we are advocating for you to call a veterinary doctor at home yes so that they can help you with the process because sorry because when you do it by yourself you'll end up hurting the, the cow maybe yeah. because after dehorning definitely the cow will bleed yes and you have to control the bleeding. I will yeah. not lie to you that you should use salt. That you should not use salt. I see so many people using salt on injury. Don't <laughs> use salt on your cow. That is me. Just saying. <laughs> me, every time I get a small injury, salt. I should talk Everything to you directly. Salt. <laughs> yeah, talk to me directly. <laughs> when you're having a, when you're having, when you have to de- dehorn an animal, the mm-hmm. animals that have horns, mm-hmm. ensure you call the, the veterinary doctor to do it for you. Don't do yes. it yourself because I know in a traditional way, when you do it and the cow starts bleeding, they just want to be pouring salt on it. That is not right. They are, they are medicine yes. that you can use on that place and it helps it heal faster. Mm-hmm. Uh, we used to have a cow that uh, used to, okay, it hit me. That's why I'm talking about it mm. with the horns. That's mm-hmm. why we decided to dehorn the cow. I also had an experience of being hit by a cow. Yes. But then again, for us, we did it the wrong way. We dehorn the cow ourselves. That's mm-hmm. why I'm telling people do not dehorn the cow and use salt mm-hmm. it will not help the cow was not healing that place was just be, was just uh, becoming more painful every mm-hmm. day it had it had now a wound it oh. even started producing some pass okay which was not good for the cow but with that we thank god because we were able to call the veterinary doctor early enough for the cow okay so don't don't do some things yourself like for people in our area, what they do with cows that are that kind of fears, mm-hmm. they cut the horns. How? They I don't. I don't know. Well. I don't know what they use, but they cut the horns. Like oh, it remains above. Yeah, from above, uh-huh. and then it remains a small horns, or they make it flip upside down. Tell us how they make it flip. I never... I don't <laughs> know. I only see cows be flipped. Horns. Cows horns are flipped. Yeah. I always thought that they are they are born that way. No. Huh. For us, they flip. Sometimes they flip it. They flip it, or even they 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 cut their horns mm. because they are always dangerous. A lot of cows are very dangerous in that area. You just find if first if you happen to to touch its calf, they come so fiercely and angry mm-hmm. towards you, wanting to strike anytime. Mm. They are such kind of cows, and also they are also men when they are fighting. Mm. You find that. There are two like two cows fighting over a female, two mm-hmm. male cows fighting for over over a female uh cow. Mm-hmm. They usually cause a very huge scene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I'm still interested in knowing how the cows hearts are flipped if you're a Samburu uh or a Turkana. Mm-hmm. Because you're a you're a mixed I'm, of I'm 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 a, I'm a Samburu. Like I'm a, a Turkana uh-huh. born in Samburu. Oh. Yes. If you're a Samburu or a Turkana and you have any idea of how yes. the cow's horns kindly lift tell us tell about us it in the comment section so that our viewers can get to learn more about it on our YouTube channel and also on our Facebook page. Yes. And, uh, I wanted you to uh 
give us your last words and as mm-hmm. you're giving us your last words mm-hmm. maybe uh, you can also enlighten enlighten as or even mention our website that can help the farmers that can help our farmers learn more the sprout website Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so guys, thank you so much for watching us. Uh, thank you so much for listening to us. It was an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, we can't wait to see the comment section for your views, for your your questions, because we need to see what you guys think about the chicks. We are talking about the <laughs> chicks. Yeah, we, think to, to, we, we want to know about what you are thinking about livestock keeping, maybe your suggestions on what we should talk next about. Yeah, and don't forget to follow us at A Farmer's Media in YouTube, A Farmer's Media in Facebook, A Farmer's Media, uh, and uh, www.afarmersmedia.com in our website. So, and don't forget, there is a platform, mm. of course, it has always been a platform called Sprout. Yeah, this is where a lot of farmers from every part of the country come together to learn and grow together. And also, in this platform, you'll be able to identify different opportunities. You'll be able to get opportunities to explore more, to get educated, and also to learn. So, make sure to tune in to www.sproutopen. Uh, let, let, let me check it again. So make sure to tune in to www.sproutopencontent.com. So here you will be able to learn about income opportunities also. Yeah. So don't forget. On that website, uh, we, are, we are championing for, for climate smart agriculture. Yes. The website that Ayan has, has just mentioned. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you have uh, our proverb of the day. Ah uh, yeah. Uh, let me let me check. Did I have it really? <laughs> you're you're a wise lady. Yeah. So you can uh, you can tell us about our proverb of the day. Okay. So the proverb of the day was uh, uh it was the best fertilizer mm-hmm. is the farmer's footsteps in the field. Yes. So the best fertilizer is the farmer's footstep in the field. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining us in our mid-morning show. That's all we had for you today. We are so excited that you're able to join us, Mm -hmm. uh, that you are able to have a conversation with us. I hope you learned a lot from our today's topic. Uh Until tomorrow, continue tuning in. We'll still be live uh, during the farm drive on our YouTube channel at Mm -hmm. A Farmers Media, on Mm -hmm. Facebook at A Farmers Media, on Twitter at A Farmers with a Z underscore media, and on our website, www www.afarmersmedia.com Continue tuning in during our next show, which will be Farm Drive. Yeah, Farm I've Drive. Your host, Mary Oswero. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I've been your host, Regina Ayanai. Have a lovely day. Have you felt that the climate has been changing? Perhaps the dry season seems hotter, the rains are too late, or too early, too little, or don't come at all. You see more pests and diseases on your shamba. All of this can lead to less yields. By managing your water and soil, you can ensure that your shamba is still productive. This could be as simple as harvesting water from your roofs, investing in solar irrigation, and practicing conservation agriculture such as mulching, crop rotation, and minimum tillage. Trees are also a part of smart farming and can help you make your farm cooler, keep your soils intact and healthy. Planting fodder crops and turning grasses into hay or silage is another smart way of adapting. But be aware that even with smart farming, some things will remain out of your control. That's why it's a good idea to think about insurance, as this can cover you from these unforeseen events. Good soil and water management, along with planting trees and pest and disease control, can also help you increase your yields and income as the climate changes. To have healthy cows that produce well, you need to feed them with enough energy from fodder crops, proteins from supplements, 
like dairy meal and legging plants, such as Caliandra, along with minerals, vitamins, and water. For a healthy cow weighing 380 kilograms, it will need to eat one bale of hay a day, which is the same as 20 kilograms of fresh fodder. If you are growing your own fodder, you'll need about one acre per year to feed one cow, one heifer, and a calf. Good fodder grasses include disease-resistant napier grass, bracaria, and panicum grasses. If you don't have enough land to feed your cows, then you'll need to buy extra fodder from other places. Remember to always have clean water available to your cows. If you want your cows to produce plenty of good milk, make sure they are always well fed. Cows need proper housing for good health, protection, and to ensure they can produce well. A good housing for your cow is clean, dry, comfortable, and safe. You need these five areas for your shed. Sleeping area, walking area, feeding area, milking place, and calf pen. You can use local materials to build your unit. Each sleeping area needs to be 7 feet long by 4 feet wide per cow. The sides should be made of wood or stone to stop wind coming through and the roof should not let rain in. The walking area needs a slope towards the back of the pen so that manure and waste can wash away. The milking place should be 7 feet long and 4 feet wide. The calf pen should be about 5 feet long and 4 feet wide per calf. Use concrete flooring in all areas so it's easy to clean. Clean your cow shed daily and use a disinfectant like Coopersine. Turning grasses into hay is a smart way of adapting to the changing climate. Cut your grass before it is overgrown and still has lots of nutrients. It's then a really good idea to make hay. Once cut, let the grass dry in the sun for three days. Turn the hay daily so it dries quicker and won't rot. The faster your grass dries, the better quality your hay. To make the hay bales, build a wooden frame that is 3 feet long, 2 feet wide and 1.5 feet high. Place strings inside the frame like this and add the grass. Compact down as much as you can. Jump up and down on the grass. Once you've squeezed in as much grass as you can, tie the string and pull it out of the wooden frame. Done! Store the hay bales in a dry, covered area off the ground for up to six months. Remember to plan for the dry season when there is not much grass for your cows to eat. You can make silage from grasses such as napier and bracaria or green maize. Here's how. First, you need to chop your grass or green maize. In a bucket, mix 3 liters of water with 1 liter of molasses. Get a big plastic sack that fits 600 kilograms. Fill the sack with two 70 kilograms packets of chopped grass. Add in the mixture of three parts water to one part molasses. Compress everything and repeat until the bag is full. Molasses help with the fermentation process. Tightly close the top of the bag so no air gets in. This will help the grass ferment and keep for long. Place heavy bricks on top of the sack. Remember, store bags off the ground so pests cannot get to them. Your silage will be ready in 21 days. But if the sack remains tightly sealed, it can last up to five years. Fodder grasses like pomeroads and napier can be planted directly in the field. 
Other type of grasses are best suited in a nursery. Here's how to set up a nursery for planting your fodder grasses. Start by measuring out your nursery bed, one meter wide and as long as you want. Raise the bed so you can manage your crop easier. Take a rope and peg it into the ground. Roll the rope across the length of the nursery, making sure it's straight and peg it on the other side. Using the rope as a guide, mark a line on both sides of the nursery. Next, spread well-rotted manure across the bed. Now, create your furrows by marking out lines 10 centimeters apart and drawing shallow furrows across the width of the bed. Because most seeds are small, it is best to mix them with topsoil so you can plant them easily. Lastly, spread mulch across the nursery to protect the seeds from harsh sun and also keep the soil moist. Water in the early mornings or evenings when it is cool.